Now we need to explore the addition of asymmetrical reagents to the family of alkenes. In this case, we will study the addition of hydrogen bromide, hydrogen chloride, and water. The addition of a hydrogen halide to an alkene adds a hydrogen to one carbon of the double bond and the halogen to the other carbon. The addition of water to an alkene adds hydrogen to one carbon of the double bond and an OH to the other carbon. This reaction of addition of water is called hydration of an alkene. For this reaction to take place, it is required the use of a catalyst that is usually a strong solution of sulfuric acid. The product of hydration of an alkene is an alcohol. The addition of an asymmetrical reagent to an asymmetrical carbon-carbon double bond is more complex. We will need to follow the Markovnikov's rule that states that when adding hydrogen bromide, hydrogen chloride, or water, the hydrogen will add to the carbon that has more hydrogen, and the other atom, the electronegative atom, will add to the carbon that is bonded to less hydrogens. In this case, we have a carbon-carbon double bond, and the bromine can add to two different carbons. We can obtain two different products. According to Markovnikov, the bromine will add to the carbon that has less hydrogens, and this will be the major product. When working problems, if you still need to play around showing the hydrogens, rewrite the molecule showing how many hydrogens are bonded to the carbon-carbon double bond. The next step is to break the double bond. Then you will rewrite the molecule and add two new bonds to the carbon-carbon where the double bond was at. Now explore how many hydrogens are present and which one will be the position to place the electronegative atom, either Br, Cl, or the OH. This central carbon has less hydrogen. It will be the place to add the halogen. This carbon has two hydrogens. We will add the hydrogen. But what is the rationale for the rule of Markovnikov to work? This has to do with the mechanism of the reaction. Detailed studies show that alkene addition reactions take place in two distinct steps. In the first step, the electrons from the carbon-carbon double bond will be added to the proton from the reagent. Now this central carbon is lacking two electrons. It needs more electrons to fulfill an octet. A carbon that is lacking electrons or bonds and carries a positive charge is called a carbocation. After hydrogen has departed, and has been added to this carbon. Now this Br is an electron rich that will also attack the carbocation. Br cannot be added to any of these two carbons because these carbons will have five bonds. If we explore the central carbon, it has one, two bonds with carbons and one bond with hydrogen is the one where we can place the Br. Here we show what is the mechanism, step by step, how the addition took place, and in the bottom we are showing only what is the overall reaction. 
we can see that the hydrogen was added to the carbon that initially has more hydrogens. We usually paraphrase this as the rich gets richer or the carbon that is rich in hydrogens gets richer in hydrogens. The major product of electrophilic addition to a carbon-carbon double bond will be the one that produces the most stable intermediate carbocation. The methyl carbocation is less stable than a primary carbocation, which is less stable than a secondary carbocation, which is less stable than a tertiary carbocation. We need to practice some more. The first example is the addition to 3 methyl cyclohexene. This class belongs to the family of disubstituted alkene. To consider the different types of alkenes, we start with a molecule of ethene that has only two carbons, one carbon carbon double bond, and four hydrogens. In a disubstituted alkene, we have replaced two hydrogens for carbons. Because both of these carbons have the same number of hydrogens, we will say that this addition is a non-selective reaction. We will still need to break the double bond to add hydrogen to one carbon and Cl to the other carbon. And at the end, it will give more or less equal amounts of both products. The mechanism of the reaction will be the same. The electron-rich double bond will be added to the hydrogen. Two possible intermediate carbocations will be formed upon addition of one hydrogen. In the last step, the halogen will be added to the carbocation. The nature of the carbon-carbon double bond when we started the addition was identical. Each one of those two carbons have only one hydrogen. However, because of the presence of a methyl group on a carbon right next to only one of the carbons forming the double bond, the products that form are not the same. You can tell that these two substances are not the same. After you finish the reaction, make sure that you name them. There is one more possible product, but it is out of the scope of a survey of chemistry. Now we need to consider the tri-substituted alkenes. This is a tri-substituted alkene because instead of hydrogen from the molecule of ethene, we have replaced three hydrogens for carbons. So we have now one, two, three carbons in these positions. When following the Markovnikov rule, this carbon has more hydrogens, will gain one hydrogen. Before you do the electrophilic addition to the family of alkenes, if you still need to see the hydrogens and you have a skeletal structures, at least around the carbon-carbon double bond, write the hydrogens to make sure that you are not missing what will be the answer. If we are adding hydrobromic acid, the hydrogen will be added on this carbon and the Br on the carbon that has more carbons bonded. Same with the cyclic Alkene. The cycloalkene will add the hydrogen to the carbon that has more hydrogens and the Br to the carbon that has the least hydrogens. We start always on the same way. Break the carbon-carbon double bond. Second, 
explore how many hydrogens are bonded to the carbon-carbon double bond. Now you need to add HBr. The carbon-carbon double bond electrons will add to the hydrogen, and that is, the formation of the new bond will be between the carbon and hydrogen within the carbon that has more hydrogens. At the same time, it will form an intermediate carbocation. Because these reactants have the opportunity of formation of tertiary carbocations that are so stable, there is no chance for the formation of other products. Only traces of other products can be formed. During the hydration of the family of alkenes, we will use a catalyst and also apply the same concept of Markovnikov rule. We will need to explore what type of carbon-carbon double bond, if it is a monosubstituted, disubstituted, trisubstituted, or tetrasubstituted alkene. We need to also look for what is the major product or the minor product, but in some cases only one product will form. I will address the questions always in the way what is the major product of reaction or what is the minor product of the reaction. When you read the textbook, it will tell you that experimentally it has been determined what is the percentage of the products, but I am not going to hold any of the students accountable for percentages, only know what is the major or minor product. In this example, because the intermediate will form a tertiary carbocation, only one product is forming, and that is a tertiary alcohol. Observe that this is a disubstituted alkene, but this carbon has two hydrogens. It's not the same type of disubstituted alkene that we just have explored. The second example if it is a tri-substituted alkene, and the OH will add to the carbon that has no hydrogens, and the hydrogen to the carbon that has one hydrogen. And we see that the final product of addition of water in the presence of a catalyst sulfuric acid is a tertiary alcohol. This is a tertiary alcohol because attached to the carbon that bears the OH, we have three carbons, one, two, three carbons. There is no difference on the second reaction for the cycloalkene. It is the same type of alkene because it's also a tri-substituted alkene, and we will also obtain a tertiary alcohol, but now it is a cyclic one. The Markovnikov rule will also apply to the family of alkynes. Addition of HBr, the Br will add to the central carbon, this is a terminal alkyne that has a hydrogen. The hydrogen will add to the terminal carbon with the hydrogen, producing an intermediate unsaturated halogen alkene. We'll continue rewriting the frame of the molecule. So you see the molecule has the same number of carbons one, two, three, four carbons. We break one of the double bonds, add two brand new bonds, and then we will add the halogen to the central carbon and the hydrogen to the terminal carbon. The intermediate product is an unsaturated haloalkene. This product, two bromo, one butene can be isolated as the reaction can be controlled by knowing what is the amount of moles of the HBr added. However, if an excess of the reagent HBr is being added, the unsaturated intermediate product will continue reacting and this carbon-carbon double bond will break. In this case, the hydrogen of a second mole of HBr will add to the terminal carbon, the carbon that has more hydrogens, 
and the second Br will add to the central carbon forming the double bond. The end result is that all of the unsaturation is destroyed and now we have an alkane-like product. We will have a bromo, both of the bromos within the same carbon and this compound is now a 2,2-dibromo-butane.